Today I have a gentleman from Anderson Hauser. His name is Peter Eliferian. And Pete is the product business manager for pressure, temperature, and data recorders. Pete, welcome to my podcast. Hey, Bill. Thanks so much. Uh, this is kind of like the Ed Sullivan show. I've been waiting to get on. <laughs> I like that. That's that's we have a really big uh, we have a really big show for you tonight or something like that or whatever you just say. Oh gosh, Ed Sullivan, and, uh, dude. Wow. Really, really big show tonight. Really, really big so show. Thank, really big show. Thank well, you for you know, having me. Yes. I'm wondering how you people watching this podcast are going to know who Ed Sullivan is. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think there might be a few. <laughs> so, hey, um, you've been with um, Andrews and Hauser for just a, bit, a little less than two years. And um, but in your career, you've been in the business for 35 plus years, if I remember correctly. And you've had stops of like a dozen, a dozen, a dozen, 10 plus years in each of your stops. And uh you know, before we go any further into Andrews and Hauser, uh, why don't you just give me a, a give the folks watching this podcast a real quick, um, you know, uh, path to ENH, path to Andrews and Hauser, so to speak. Sure. Uh, thanks for asking, Bill. So yeah, actually, I've been with ENH uh, just just north of two years, um, and uh, Andrews and Hauser for just north of two years, and it, it it's been great. Um, I cover quite a bit of territory for our pressure, temperature, and data recorder products. And um, uh, the geography changed a little bit, but predominantly the, the, the East Coast. So I get to work with uh, all our nice representatives like, like yourself. So I, I love the story of, uh, if you ever seen Taken, where Leon Nielsen uh, talks to the bad guy, Marco, uh, I have a particular set of skills that I have acquired over a lifetime. And that's kind of how I look at uh, my uh, three quadrants of, of my work life. So. Out of school, uh, mechanical engineering degree, I uh, was uh, able to, to work with a, the co-op. It was a non-destructive testing company. So ultrasonics, eddy current, resistivity, acoustic emission, basically it was ways to uh, uh, figure out whether a component or a structure was uh, good without, you know, with, without breaking it. Um, they, I mean, they did more with uh, uh, 64K of memory and a CPM operating system than, than you could imagine. So anyway, acquired a lot of different skills from product management to research and, and whatnot. So flip uh, 12 years, uh, seemed to be the cycle, uh, uh, went to work for a large uh, software company. So that was the days when computers were now competing with DCSs and you had SCADAs and you had all the uh, computer controlled devices. Um, so I spent uh, a number of years with uh, SCADA devices, historians, uh, MRS uh, systems, ERP systems, all the things that uh, we take advantage of today. Again, a 12 year itch, moved on to a large industrial automation company, similar to Anderson Hauser. And, um, basically pressure temperature data recorders controllers flow uh spent quite a bit of time with uh, wireless technology so all that put together i'm now with anderson hauser very proud to represent them uh, as the product business manager for data uh pressure and temperature and um that's uh my my three quadrants and i'm in my fourth quadrant that's your that's your triangle now you're going to make the box right so uh but you know it's interesting you you touched on a lot of different technologies, and uh, and when we were having a little, you know, uh, a, a pre-recording session last week, when we just kind of talked about, hey, how we're going to frame the conversation, um, you were saying that um, uh, a, a lot of motivation, a lot of your groundwork to getting in the technical um, arena was from your dad, and uh, you started talking about what your dad did and, and his career, and uh, well, let's just share that with the folks who are watching this podcast. Yeah, thanks for asking, Bill. So yeah, uh, my dad passed away in 2011, um, but you'd be hard pressed to uh, uh, walk through our house growing up without uh, seeing tools on the counter and and and, and whatnot. So I'd like to share a story of um, uh, of a twin brother. Um, so I, I was Pete, and he was always repeat. So I'm not sure who who got mad uh, more, me being Pete or him him being uh, re repeat. But uh, we, we we laugh about that story every now and again. So back in the day, uh, kids actually did things like cut grass. So neighbors sponsor kids uh, cutting grass. Now you have these, these large corporate entities and that, that, that's okay. But uh, 
we amassed a, a, a long cutting following of uh, probably 10 to 12 neighbors. So back in the day, we you didn't have a commercial lawnmower. We we had a, a Sears and Roebuck, and I'm sure my parents bought it. Yeah. And 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 it, it was a feat to keep these these non-commercial mowers running. So every weekend, uh, my my dad we, we had spare parts on the show. It, it was like an indie pit crew where changing tires and uh, the blades and belts and things. But uh, so the apple didn't fall far from the tree. Uh, I. Growing up, you know, got my hands messy um, uh, doing that. So, anyway, uh, he, just a bit of his past. He he started off uh, at uh, back then it was Bell Labs, which merged to Western Electric to Lucent to AT and T. Yeah. So that was uh, basically the precursor to the cell phone, uh, the precursor to semiconductors, robotics, all these cool technologies. Uh, he actually headed a research group of up to 350 people um, uh, doing that. So very humble man. You wouldn't have known that, but um, uh, that's where I get my uh, uh, solid background. That's that's really cool, Pete. Thanks for, thanks for sharing that with us. And, uh, you know, by the way, it's, it's funny you mentioned about cutting lawns and stuff. My son, actually, when he was 15, he took my lawnmower and started a, a lawn business. And um, and today he's um, a 30 year old young man who uh, has a landscaping business, you know, crews, okay. contracts, uh, snow removal, the, uh, the whole gamut, the real deal. So uh, there you go, man. You, you never know where that long cutting business is uh, is going to take you someday. Right. So so um, thanks for sharing the story about your dad. But uh, hey, um, let's go to um, we talk about products, you know, so you have. Do the product business manager, you guys got to get shorter titles for pressure, temperature, data recorders, right? So, um, and you've got, again, this big bucket of part, big bucket of parts, big bucket of product scope. And yeah. I always ask the product managers, what, you know, what really are you excited about? What's, what's one of the products you think is a niche product or a product that really, really differentiates you from the competition? And you were talking about, DP with Andrews and House or the electronic DP that we offer. So um, you've got some pre prepared stuff on that. Let's let's good. All right. So I mean, certainly Andrews and Hauser has a lot of cool technologies and and the ones I uh, cover. Um, but I always like framing out. Uh, there, there's typically four different ways you can measure differential pressure and level. Um, so I like starting off framing it out uh, the, the different ways and kind of maybe interject advantages, disadvantages. So a traditional way of doing it is with a true differential pressure transmitter, uh, typically with um, uh, stainless steel impulse lines, uh, very easy to uh, configure and plumb, uh, but there can tend to be some issues with uh, what we call dry legs or wet legs. So whether there is process fluid in it, wet leg, or headspace uh, uh, air or gas in it, your, your dry leg, they can become inconsistent over time, condensation, um, leaking, those kind of things. So, you know, while we do it, it's it's a it's a, a, a respective way of, of doing differential uh, pressure. Uh, there are some uh, potential issues um, that you need to be aware of. So, a second way of doing it, and it's done all the time. And while this truly isn't a um, uh, uh, capillary uh, oil filled capillary system, I just want to get the point across. With yeah, it's an example. Uh, yeah. So you have uh, basically uh, re remote seals, and they, they serve a number of different uh, purposes, uh, dual containment where you have a, a dual protection uh, from the process connection to the transmitter, but there is plumbing involved. So typically it's an oil-filled uh, capillary with, with armor, a little, little rigid, uh, but you can from two to three to 20 to 25 feet, um, you can have some temperature effects, uh, just the time delay from getting your pressure measurement through the oil. You know, you're, you're hitting kind of like your brake pedal. You hit it here and fluid has to go to basically get to the transmitter. So we do it all day long, but there are some concerns uh, typically in outside tanks for uh, temperature drift. So the, the third way of doing it is perhaps just two independent transmitters so uh, you can put one at your low side one at your high side uh, some of the perhaps disadvantages is you have to wire them twice and you have to have a a, a third party thing whether it's one of our little ria products uh, do the calculation or your plc or dcs not a big deal 
Um, but again, the third way of doing it. So the fourth and way, and Pete, because, if I could, Pete, real quick, those three ways you just said, right? Um, yep. Those ways have been out there for decades, right? Absolutely. Uh, 60% of uh, DP level is done with um, a pressure transmitter, very reliable, cost-effective, um, uh, respective way of, of, of doing levels. So they've been out there for decades, like you said, Bill. Yeah. So as you can imagine, we're building up to our electronic DP. Yeah. So it really is a, a, a very uh, unique system where you, you have two sensors and a transmitter. So a transmitter might look like this. And the advantage is you don't have impulse lines. You don't have oil filled capillaries. You just have a digital cable. So basically you have a, a low side transmitter connected to a high side transmitter, which then would connect to your transmitter. So low side sensor, high side sensor connected to our, our transmitter. So the beauty of this is you can move this anywhere you want. Uh, the distance between uh, your low side and high side, it can be a, a hundred feet, uh, 30, 30 meters. So there's no restriction like an oil fill capillary. You'll never get that, that kind of system. So tall distillation columns, perfect. Also, you can get a very long distance from your uh, high side connection to your transmitter. So you can mount this where, wherever you want. You're, you're not limited to traditional um, electronic systems where you, you have to, um, th this is actually your, your, your sensor. So the three components allows a lot of uh, flexibility where, where you might, um, where you might yeah, put this. Yeah. So, yeah. so we do come, while we have this, we, you know, we do have also hygienic and life science. So uh, we, we do very well in industrial uh, applications like chemical and re refining water, wastewater, as well as food and beverage and, and life science. So um, we have um, uh, devices that will f uh, fit in all those different industries. Down of applications, yep, industries, okay. So those are the four ways I like framing out. And, and again, we, we do all four of those. Uh, the, the, the first three you know, do have potential issues with impulse lines, with uh, uh, the, the plumbing issues, the capillaries with the temperature effect issues, the two transmitters with uh, potentially, you know, again, wiring issues and um, the, the calculation. Electronic DP come, comes clean. So there really are uh, some of the advantages, I look, like to look at three different areas from a, a reliability standpoint, uh, a safety standpoint, and, and cost uh, standpoint. So from a reliability standpoint, um, you can eliminate the temperature effect of an oil-filled capillary by 95%. It, it just goes away. So what that is, is uh, basically it, it, it's a sundial. Uh, an out, outdoor tank, sun comes up heats up the oil, what happens? It pushes against the, the uh, pressure cell and you, you, get, you get some drift. So all of that goes away. Uh, you also get the benefit with electronic DP of, of three measurements. You get the differential pressure measurement, you can get the headspace measurement, which could be important uh, if you're using nitrogen uh, for, for a blanket pressure, that costs money. So if you need to control that, uh, you can actually now look at that, just that independent, um, uh, low side pressure. You also get a temperature measurement, uh, which is indicative of your process. Uh, so those three measurements come across over heart and can add value along with, with the diagnostics. And one of the last ones is the, uh, the speed of response. This is digital. So unlike um, uh, a capillary system, uh, you gonna have, have, have a time delay. So a digital uh, millisecond transmission uh, can, can be important uh, if it's a safety application and you have a burner on and your tank goes dry and it takes seconds to you know recognize that you know it, it could be a, a safety related uh, uh, issue wow. so as we go into safety uh, we can eliminate a lot of the issues or potential issues with uh, impulse lines for example uh, they're notorious uh, for for leaking and cogging and, and, and blocking um, and, and those kind of things. Yeah. Uh, so from a safety aspect. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead, sorry. Yep, so from a safety aspect, um, a, a lot of those uh, plumbing issues go, go away with our uh, electronic DP. 
So, and one of the the, the last things, again, you know, what's in it for you, the, the, the cost benefits. Um, so we can use the existing wiring from, um, from, from a current system for replacing it. When you change components, there's no recalibration uh, required. Uh, we have quick uh, watertight uh, disconnects. Uh, some of the biggest cost savings, and you can put this to the big dollars, is installation cost. So unlike a capillary system where you probably need two, if not three people in a large system to handle the transmitter, handle the sensors, it, it's one, one system. Um, you might need to erect uh, scaffolding, which which there's a cost. Electronic TP is, is very modular. Uh, one uh, operator, engineer, um, technician on a, on, a, on a ladder can mount the, the low side, very easily connected to the high side, connected to the transmitter. So there are some huge cost savings from, um, so, uh, from so the installation. Have, you have safety savings, or it's, it's safer installation. You have uh, less maintenance and you have um, a lower cost of installation in some of the major drivers of this. Right. And one of the others is, is spare parts. So this is this is very modular. So uh, spare parts uh, might look like just a handful of different uh, sensors and maybe a spare transmitters uh, versus you know complete capillary systems, for example. So cost savings on the spare part aspect. And also in our northern areas, uh, it gets cold up here, right, Bill? Yes, it does. Uh, so freeze protection. Uh, you don't have to look to run uh, heat tracing or freeze protection on on a digital cable like you might on a uh, on, on a capillary system. So all those combined to a you know very robust uh, measuring system that um, can provide cost savings um, uh, for, for the big picture. All right, cool. Uh, and I think Pete, you have a, a slide to just kind of show a typical installation and a couple of field installations just to kind of uh, show the field yeah. in this podcast uh, what this. Uh, like uh, uh, just there you go like a typical installation i know you have a couple field installs too let's go there go ahead pete yeah so so this is you know in in a nutshell our our installation you know process connections we can accommodate almost um, almost any process connection um, uh, out there but your your low side digitally connected to your high side digitally connected to your transmitter again very flexible four components your two sensors a transmitter and a signal cable so uh, very easy to uh, um, uh, to configure and install. And I'll tease you a little, Bill. Uh, Serifier, a ceramic cell. This is going to be another podcast probably, but uh, we do yeah. offer, one of the few offer a, a, a ceramic cell, which offers some unique benefits uh, in vacuum and aggressive materials and abrasive materials. So put a little yeah. teaser out there for you. And, yeah, that's uh, true. I, I, that, yeah, thanks. Because, we, yeah, we, we talked about that, and, and I think we will have an episode on the ceramic uh sell so, so go oh, yeah. <laughs> i heard so, that was decent so, out there though good good yeah so some some common applications are and and these are painted uh from company x y and z per their uh, uh protocols for safety devices but th this is basically an electronic uh dp across a filter so you see our our two uh, transmitters our, our low side our high side and then we have our I'm sorry, Bill, these are our sensors connected to our uh, a transmitter. Again, very, very flexible. Uh, um, you don't have to worry cabling. You can just wind it up, unlike an oil filled capillary. You, you, you're not going to want uh, tens of feet of royal, uh, rolled up uh, oil filled capillary. Uh, it's not good you know, engineering practice. So, another uh, view of a, a distillation column, perhaps, we have our transmitter. Uh, here and then you can see um, this is actually the low side and we can't see the high side. But again, the, the point I want to make is that, you know, very flexible on uh, cabling and easy to install. And um, that's what the, the distillation column uh, might look like. And a third one might look like this. This, this was a nasty uh, formaldehyde uh, process uh, where, it, again, uh, just a different view of a a very heavy uh, flange uh, using our our electronic DP. Wow. So those are some of the uh, in installation pictures I can share with you, and um, hopefully that um, uh, showed him a couple examples. Pete, thanks a lot. That's excellent. Um, and you know what? I I um, prior representing Engine House, or you know, we represented another major manufacturer, and and I actually 
lost a couple jobs to you guys because of this technology and, and I've had success now selling it and working with customers on this technology. It's 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 unique. It's and you can see the major features that it brings, you know, the the uh, and you know focusing on safety and maintenance and cost of installation and a couple other points you had, so less spare parts, etc. So a hey, um um Folks, uh, so, the, so the point here is if you've got a, a DP level measurement and you want to take a look at a, a um, game changing technology, a, a, cha uh, a technology that can help you in many ways, give Eastern Controls a phone call. Um, and uh, even if you, a general level application, give us a phone call because Anderson Houser has a very broad and full product line of level measurement. Uh, Pete, thanks very much for uh, joining me on my podcast. Great. I enjoyed it, Bill. Thanks for having me. Appreciate the that time. Was awesome. That was awesome, man. Great job. Uh, again, that's Pete Alfarian. I got I to look up my board here. He's the business mat, product business manager for pressure, temperature, and data recorders. Everyone, thanks for uh, checking in. Thanks for say, uh, checking out uh, um, my podcast this week. And we'll see you again next week. All right, thank you.